What is primary cutaneous gamma delta T cell lymphoma? Primary cutaneous gamma delta T cell lymphoma is a very rare subtype of cutaneous lymphoma. About 20% of patients have history of autoimmune disorders. So immunocompromise appears to be a significant predisposing factor in this disease. What does it look like? The most common presentation for primary cutaneous gamma delta T cell lymphoma is the presence of multiple deep plaques. However, it can also present as a solitary lesion or a superficial plaques or even patches and nodules. Ulceration is very common and is reported in up to 50% of patients. Also unique to this uh, cutaneous lymphoma is that patients very often present with B symptoms. So fever, drenching nice sweats, or unintentional weight loss. There are also some typical laboratory findings, such as an elevated LDH. LDH is a marker uh, that is typically elevated in aggressive lymphoma, and also uh, blood work uh, commonly uh, shows uh, that there are uh, there is myelosuppression with low blood counts, so low white blood cell count, anemia, or low platelets. Patients with this diagnosis should undergo imaging studies because it's very important that we exclude the presence of advanced disease with multiple sites other than the skin. So we recommend that patients undergo PET scan or CT scan. Careful assessment of clinical, laboratory, and most importantly, the uh, findings from the biopsy are really necessary in this disease to confirm diagnosis. Therefore, when this diagnosis is suspected, when primary cutaneous gamma delta T cell lymphoma is suspected, it's very important that the slides are reviewed at a center where there is significant expertise in the diagnosis of T cell lymphoma. There are some specific markers that are unique to this disease and can um, help to distinguish it from other types of cutaneous T cell lymphoma. Uh, in most cases, not all cases, so CD2 and CD56 are typically uh, positive, and also cytotoxic markers are positive, like TIA and granzyme B. And as I said, these markers could help in the differential diagnosis, but it's very important that we put together the clinical presentation, the laboratory findings, and the pathologic findings to really make sure that this is the right diagnosis. What are the treatments? As I mentioned earlier, this is a rare disease. So there is very scarce data that is present in the literature, mostly case reports and small case series. Therefore, there is really not a lot of data about what is the standard treatment for patient with this diagnosis. Most experts agree that because this is an aggressive disease that typically has a poor prognosis, that we use aggressive type of chemotherapy. So the treatment approach is very similar to what we use in other types of systemic T cell lymphoma. So we would use either an anthracycline-based chemotherapy, so CHOP or CHOP-like, or a regimen called ICE, which includes three different chemotherapy agents, iphosphamide, carboplatin, and etoposide. 
As I mentioned, this is a disease that typically is resistant to conventional treatment and has a poor prognosis. So in, uh, in an attempt to really improve uh, the outcome, the survival of uh, patients affected with this disease, we actually looked at the possibility of using uh, stem cell transplantation from a donor, so allogenic bone marrow transplantation. And for patients who are candidates, so they're fit for this procedure, we typically recommend allogenic stem cell transplantation after chemotherapy. Um, the recent reports uh, have shown that with this approach, we actually had very encouraging results with better overall survival. For patients who did not undergo stem cell transplantation after chemotherapy and diagnosis for, and have relapsed disease, recurrent disease, we do recommend a bone marrow transplant at the time of relapse after salvage chemotherapy.